CRS TV investigates. Live. <laughs> wow. No. Yes, we brand new thing. Of, we haven't done one of these live. I don't know. Maybe this is kind of the future. And you guys are going to tell us what you think. Uh, Beers TV Live, the Sky Edition. Awesome. Mm, otherwise known as the Shill Edition. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tooting your own horn. Yes. You just said, actually, I don't know why. This, I'm so nervous about this one. <laughs> uh, like, what is it? All right. Give them give you, your sign on. No. What's up, YouTube? All right. Neptune All right. Sky. I'm going to tell you, though, why, why you're so nervous. Why? Because you're being judged. Oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. The yeah, whole yeah. world is judging yeah. this moment. We're going to say nothing but awesome, great things about this light. Uh, but actually, the data speaks for itself. So we're going to see all kinds of data today. The same test we run all of our lights through. It happens right here on the sky. We haven't been holding it. We had this data for a while. It just took a, long, a while to finally get compose it together. Yeah, we got it done this morning. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, what you're going to see, man, is uh, all the things this thing's great for today. Uh, and uh, let's just, like, uh, dive right in. And you know what? Like we said, uh, actually, so a lot of people are like, how could you possibly? So for those who don't know. Uh, Neptune is actually our sister company to BRS now. Yep. So uh, in some ways, uh, I don't know, this is a BRS product, but uh, can we be still like, uh, you know, honest True and truthful? Yeah. And can we still like, are we going to be biased? Uh, I don't know. Judge us all you want. Let's see. Numbers. That's Truth, all. Proof that's, is in the pudding. Oh, numbers. All right. Let's go look. All right. So this is what you're going to see today. Spoiler alert uh, as we go through it. Uh, what is the sky good for? It is a T5-like shadow performance, ideal oh, yeah. for SPS, uh, eliminating disco and overwhelming shimmer, uh, modular design without 10 cords, uh, lower price per par than half of its pack. That's, That's probably a surprise to many people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, can be used in a larger than 24 inch area, square inch area, after we did the data testing. Yes. And it's Apex ready. There you go. All right, but, all right, shoot. There are some challenges. Uh, the ch so a couple of the challenges, I mean, one is, yes, it's a solid LPS light, um, but definitely not the cheapest answer for that. You'll see uh, at 25% uh, to get LPS numbers, there's probably better options out there for that purpose. At least, like, least, least ex or lower, uh, lower cost options. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Spectrum is not as wide as some of the competitors in the same price range. You'll see that, um, but you also see where it does really well in the Spectrum, in the Spectrum test. And it is a larger form factor, so not everybody's going to need this size of uh, light over their tank. I think uh, where a Kessel shines on like a, a 24 by 24 inch cube uh, for certain purposes, this one might be a little too big for some people. Yeah, for that same I don't purpose. know. You're going to find out all that stuff today. Yep. That was a little bit of a spoiler. There you Let's go. Let's get to it. How do we come to those conclusions? Uh, I can't wait to see if you guys agree. Here we go. Uh, let us know. All right. So par. This is the, the whole purpose of the light. Supports life. Yeah. It provides all of the energy uh, for, all is a strong word, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, it supports all of the energy for the coral to be able to support its metabolic function. So yeah. how does it do? Can it do it? All right. So uh, the first thing we look at is cost per par, meaning bang for the buck. We're trying to get past the, mm -hmm. like, is it worth it? Was it like some kind of mentality to decide, right. you know, how do I weigh this against the other things that are out there? Yeah, and so one of the things, you know, cost per par wise is, okay, so what if it pushes out 1,200 par and it, so the cost and the cost is like 800 bucks, you're ended up with like cents on the dollar cost per par. But when you actually tune it to something that's usable, it changes drastically. Mm -hmm. But at 100% intensity, all channels, uh, cost per par, $2.23. And so that's like a 390 average par on the top of the water level. So we took all 36 points and averaged them together and we divided $869 or, uh, by that, we get to 223. Uh, the relevance of that is for comparison, that was uh, the average of all the lights like we've done before yep. was 210. A so dime on, higher. A dime, uh, yeah. And yeah. Also on par, <laughs> forgive, yeah. the, forgive the pun. But so he, on yeah. average, right in the middle of the pack in terms of cost yep. uh, per par. We did that cost per par breakdown on a live stream before where everybody saw like 100% all channels and what it brought for par, mm -hmm. cost per par analysis. Now, new, new world. Yeah. Let's actually adjust this light to how you would actually use it, not just turn all the, par, uh, the channels on max, yeah. right? Because nobody does that in most cases. 
Uh, however, in this case, uh, what was the cost per par now? Yeah, like six cents higher at, uh, the big number to, to point out here is the average is 380, uh, whereas just, we, just the slide before we saw at uh, all channels 100%, average par was 390. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the, the message that's hidden in there is you can actually run this thing with all of the channels nearly at max. Right? Yeah. We only turned a couple of them down and it's still visually really attractive. Mm -hmm. So that means you don't got like a whole like ton of white ones in there that yeah. are just turned down to 20%, and which is kind of a waste of money. And this BRS custom settings that we set it to is just, you know, what we kind of get pooled together as a team and we go, all right, what looks good to the eye? And all that for the settings on this one, all that we did was bring down that uh, amber and green channel about like 25%, but left everything 100. So that's why you're still seeing 380 par, only a 10 par difference. Yeah, all right, so yeah, only 10 tar par difference between max and 100%. It will really be cool to see how this story develops uh, with other lights, but this is probably gonna be about the bar uh, yeah. to beat. Yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, for comparison, the last light we tested at- uh, uh, Usable par? At usable par was 282, which is a lot more than 229 per mm -hmm. par, so uh, this was 18% cheaper. There you go. All right, okay, so average par. What kind of corals can this thing actually support? And so for those of you who don't know, we take a two by two cube and uh, we measure at six, uh, 12, and 18 inches deep in the tank and take 36 points uh, at each level and figure it out. And what we found is uh, we need to run the light at 70%, yep. meaning that uh, if we went higher than 70, we'd actually be outside of the par window. Yeah, so for the SPS part, we are looking for a window range of 200 to 350 and as many points of the 108 points top, middle, bottom in that 200 to 350 range. Uh, we found that at a 70% running of our custom schedule or of our custom settings, which is 76 out of 108 points. That means 70% is the goal. It means 70% of the 108 points in the tank. Is what we shoot for. As we shoot for, and it hit 70. <laughs> it, <laughs> exactly. Right on the nose. So uh, no question, capable of producing uh, the type of energy corals uh, required in a two by two by two cube. So we're gonna give you a little closer look into what that actually looks like. Yeah. And so one of the important ports, points of this though is you can actually go bigger. So I think they suggest that this light would actually go up to uh, like 36, 36 inches or so, yeah. Definitely like a 90 cube this would be, oh, this good. Perfect. Like 30 inch yeah. cube. So you'll be some shadows that come from that as you get bigger and bigger than the light source. And this is something you're definitely gonna see today. today today's shadow uh, test, like you gotta see. Uh, uh, right. So you can go bigger, but this is what it looked like. At uh, six inches deep uh, with a nine inch mounting height, you saw that there is a warm spot right in the center here of 435, a little higher than our SPS goal, uh, but all the rest of this yellow area right in that sweet spot of 200 to 350. Yeah, uh, back wall you can see and you'll see in every single light test we ever do, back wall's painted black and it absorbs light more than it reflects light, so that's why they're lower. Yep, so back wall always be lower. All right, and you can see it here uh, in the middle of the tank, every single spot in the tank other than the very back uh, where it's black is inside the sweet spot. And then the same thing on the bottom here, everything other than the very back, which probably in this case would be under your aquascape, right in the sweet spot. No question, this is uh, going to produce the type of par and even at only 70% output uh, that you're looking for an SPS tank. All right, LPS. LPS. So that goal of 75 to 150, how did it do? Well. We had to run it at 25% of our BRS custom setting. So, I mean, you're losing 75% of your light. Yeah, that's a, like it's a- not losing it, but you're just not, you're not using it. You're kind of paying for a lot of LEDs you don't need. But, you know, one of the benefits, I guess, of that is that you're gonna run them really cool. You're not gonna hear any fans. Mm. There's not like, a, it's just a, a probably longevity you'll get out of running them all, like just barely on, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but. 80 of 108 points in the LPS zone of 150 to, uh, or 75 to 150. 70% is the goal again, and we hit 74. Boom, yeah, pretty so good. pretty good. Again, in the same here, right, uh, just the four inch square right in the center where they took the points, a little bit of warm, the rest of it right in the sweet spot, whole tank other than the back in the sweet spot, whole tank other than the back in the sweet spot. This is spreading out a light really good in the tank, and we are able to hit you know, obviously an LPS tank. And if there's one person that uses it for an LPS tank to show you what it looks like, this guy. 
<laughs> yeah. So, you know, I will not say that this is the cheapest option to write a L or light a LPS tank because it's not. No. But it is a legitimate replacement for T5s if mm -hmm. you don't want to deal with bulb changes, the cost of bulb changes. You don't want to deal with uh, like mercury and hazardous waste and trying to get rid of these things. So uh, this is a, just an example of what's going on in my house. And so in my house, I run four of them. And so uh, I actually originally told them that I wanted to put six because I really just wanted a two foot area for right. each. After I saw four in there. It's too much. Yeah, uh, it was just six was too. I'm much. only running these things at 15 percent actually. Uh, probably work my way up to 25, but yeah. uh, it, six would have been ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and so, and it works just fine in this case. So uh, you can see I got four of them. And for reference point, this is almost a six foot long tank by four feet deep uh, and like 26 <laughs> inches tall. Yeah, and you'll see the Kessels up in here, up here too, and that par reasons, that's not really adding much par, that's really there mm. for shimmer aesthetics, which you'll see. Yeah, you'll see the later. shimmer here in, right now, actually. Okay, so this is uh, the tank that it, that it is supporting at Ooh. the moment. Uh, and uh, so you can see that I just wanted to turn up the shiver, shimmer, and that's why the, the Kessels are there. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about shimmer. I just really like extra. We're I on care. opposite ends of that because I like that. I like that flatter look, but yeah, it actually looks. It turned out really well. It looks really well. Yeah, and so, you have fifteen percent. You're running your lights at. This yeah, is amazing. I know. So I don't know. You know, the, the thing that it does though, that like it fills in all of those areas mm -hmm. that would have otherwise been shaded or you know hiding behind another coral, and having a big, large light source actually you know exposes areas to light that i couldn't have corals in before and you know for me for those of you who don't know i had a really elaborate system that was in there before yeah. and it was two rows of or six rows six rows of well, three rows of xr <laughs> or xho's uh, yeah. blue and three of 50 50 and then six castles loved 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 it that's but for somebody trying to film their tank man it was a giant nightmare to oh, try yeah. to adjust all those yeah. lights to go on camera Oh, and the cord mess, too. Well, you know, I had put away the cords in that case. Uh, I'd really spent a lot of time hiding them all. Yep. Uh, but, like, in the end, man, my real thing here was I, I just had to, it was really, really hard to adjust all the lights so everything wasn't just blown out. Mm. And to get six different lights off of the schedule, it just was, it was more work than I wanted. But you're essentially, that we're going to get to here in spread, is your, uh, your ha one light, you have four of these things, one light is lighting like a three foot by two foot area, more mm -hmm. or less. So three foot by three foot, two foot by two, two by foot. Two by yeah. three almost. So yep. six, six foot by four feet. So That's that, 24 by 36, which is actually pretty close to what they said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of spread, like you said, we're eliminating shadows even on the LPS that move. Uh, so they're constantly exposing to light. But that shadow type thing, uh, you'll see later. But uh, we'll see what spread looks like here. Uh, this is just like an iPhone shot. Yeah, I should have brought a camera home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, all right, so spread. So that was one of the big things that we talked about. Uh, and you can see spread. But one of the things that we're going to see here is a difference between spread and shadows. Because I can actually get a really small lens to go out a long ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I put something in the way, I'll, I'll block all the light. So you're going to see that here in just a second. So think about it like this. If I have a, a bulb type lens, right, like almost like a, a, almost like a light bulb, you know, that, that lens design, that round shape of the lens design forces light as far left and right and front and back as possible so you can get some massive spread. Uh, whereas you take a flat panel like this and it tends to just want to shine down. Well, it shines out wide, but you're not using the ends of a lens to shoot it out yeah. all the yeah. way. So it'll be really, it's interesting. So in, in this case, uh, you know, you got the light uh, above the tank. Uh, we found that nine inches was the right height. Uh, to get that height, we uh, raise it until 15% of the par spills out of the tank and into the room. Uh, that seems to be the sweet spot of trying to get uh, a good even uh, spread while not wasting a ton of light. Right. Uh, uh, again, this thing doesn't use any additional lenses. It's just the lenses that are come on the LED and mm -hmm. then the diffuser. And what we saw is a 47 drop, a percent drop in light from the dead center. Four points. All the way to the edge. Uh, and so what, to give you a reference point on it, there are a lot of lights that we found dropped 80%. You know, yes. so it was Laser 600 par almost. in the center and like, you know, 50 on the edges, yeah. right? Yeah. 
which is actually more than that. But uh, then well, we also found the best was 20%. 20% drop in light from center. Yeah. But there again, those are using lenses, mm -hmm. so it's designed to spread the light out as far as possible. So the Radiot, I think, was, is the one yes. that was 20%. Yep. So it has those little round lenses, and it was able to spread it out as far as possible. Yeah, right? in a smaller form factor. Uh, in a smaller form factor. Uh, and there's different things there that go with that, but that was 20% is the best. 47 is actually right in the middle then uh, in terms of uh, performance. But if you look at it, what you'll see here is really that right other than that very, very, very center, uh, the four inch cube in the center, 343, 300, 345, 310. So most of the tank is actually really, really even, mm. just a little bit of a warm spot in the, in the yeah. center. All right. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, note the middle ring and the outside is very close. All right, so here's the piece though. So we got that, that, that spread piece, but now how does it block the light? You know, and presumably it will perform better because it's a big giant light source this big. Right, right. right. Uh, kind of like, you know, how T5's performed. So let's look. There's two extremes of mm -hmm. shadows. This is on the far extreme end with hard shadows and high contrast, meaning I can make out every detail of the actual coral itself uh, in the shadow against the back wall uh, on both cases. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest ones is inside of the coral. Yeah, you can see shadow inside the branches. And this is a small form factor of light that is going to produce, this is just going to behave this way, this is the way it is. Uh, you're going to see all of uh, the shadows within the coral. You can obviously see a super hard shadow on the wall behind it. You can see it on this one, and you can imagine if I put this one in front of this one, it would just the sky would be blocked out. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, all right. So that's you know kind of the that's one, one end, end, right? High contrast, hard shadow. Opposite end. Opposite end. I can barely make out this dark spot behind it, meaning it's well lit from all angles. Uh, same on this one, and then actually looking at the coral itself, I, I can't hardly see a hard shadow in the skeletal structure itself. So this only happens one way. This is a T5, by the way. Yeah, this is a big T5, uh, eight ball T5 that did this. So w w only, it was like a two foot one though, actually. Yeah, so yeah two 24 foot inch, yeah. So uh, the only way that this happens is when the light source is larger than the object that you're trying to illuminate, or at least close, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because it has to like hit it from all angles and you can't have something blocking it. Yeah. And, and this is just like, true of every photosynthetic application, it's true of photography, it's true of uh, videography, it's, it's true in any lighting scenario that if you want to eliminate shadows, you either need to use multi-point lighting, which would mean I got a whole ton of lights that are all close to each other and creating a grid, or I use one giant light that uh, wraps the object mm. in light. So that's what this is. Well, you think about this, we didn't really touch on it on the last one, is, okay, so those dark spots on the high contrast uh, all the dark spots within the de in, in the depths of the coral, they're just not if they're just not getting light. So, if I'm blocking, you know, like that we like to say we've talked about it several times. If I'm blocking half of the coral, this half is getting all the light. This half is getting no light. Uh, and it, then it, it's also taking that energy from the side that's getting lit and is pushing that towards the unlit side, so it's you lo losing energy. It's only getting like 50% of uh, the energy that from the light because it's getting shadowed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you eliminate those shadows, now all parts get 100% of the light. All right, so anybody who's doing that, been doing this for a while can also tell you straight up. I've seen tanks where the inner network of the bird's nest is oh, like yeah. all dead. Mm -hmm. uh, just only the outside part of it is alive. And I've seen a uh, uh, bird's nest where all the way down, it's based out, like that isn't just a problem. Mm. So uh, what is that from? You know, it's probably a little bit of flow. Uh, and it's also uh, very much, man, I'm getting energy that that thing requires to live <laughs> to the animal, right? Uh, okay. Okay. So. This is what this looks like on a larger scale. So uh, this is the softest to be in the T5 look. You can see there's no shadows really here. And then when you look at the single points of light, which is a higher contrast, all these shadows all mm. the way around the bottom. You see the shadow underneath the coral here. You see the shadow of this coral shadowing this coral. You can barely even see this coral where you can see them over here. Yeah. So you can really start to see like 
you know, how a big, large form factor light differs from uh, two smaller ones, yeah. right? Uh, and so, so here's the sky. This is how the sky performed. And uh, as you can see, it is very T5-like. Uh, you're not seeing any of the shadow mm. here. You're not seeing any of the shadow here. You can see this coral, none of them on the bottom. Yeah, the bottom is one of the biggest ones, because when you look at that, that high contrast one, you can sm almost make out the little little nodules coming off of the bottom of this one down on the ground and you can see corals in between the aquascape down over here uh, mm -hmm. but with the t5 on the last one and the skies here on this one it's just not there and there's a little bit of shimmer that you see there yeah i mean you can clearly make all the branches out everywhere everywhere and yeah. so anything was in that way it would be uh be shadowed all right so now, when we say it's uh, T5 versus the sky, this is what that T5 looks like. This is what the sky looks like. And other than that tiny little bit of shimmer that's here, you know what? I don't think most people would be able to see, see the difference. Uh, so when we first put the three skies on the 900 over here on the video set, I had Adam and Nick and Josh and a whole bunch of us sitting here. And the doors were closed, and I said, I said, "All right, step back and take a look." If you were, if I was going to ask you, not knowing that the sky is, you know, keep keep the sky out of your mind that we just installed them. If I was going to ask you what was lighting that tank, what would you say it was? And I, all of us except for one said, "It looks like T5s." So uh, I'm just going to say it like I think it is, right? And I, I'd be curious how much of you guys agree, but I think the transition from giant reflectors and mm -hmm. halides mm -hmm. and giant T5s to small compact uh, forms of light has been like a major step backward for all of us. Mm. And we were really thinking about form factor and how it looks on a tank or I don't know what we were thinking about. Right, right. But we weren't really thinking about how to fold a synthetic organism requires light and how that these organisms grow and shadow each other mm. and themselves. And so, I. Uh, I would be shocked if the industry doesn't start. just start trending in this direction, especially for uh, uh, SBS corals and, and similar branching type corals. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, I would not be surprised if we get more and more of these. I mean, the ATI is already on there, Phillips Coral Care is already on that path, you know, Sky's on that path. There's just more and more people on the path back to big giant form factor. Okay, I'm gonna speed back here because I actually wanna show you something. So when you think about like the LPS coral or whatever, I think of actually a small form factor light actually works really well and it's high contrast, looks good on encrusting coral. So like, ah. you know, your lords that encrust in the rocks, the, you know, some of the uh, mm -hmm. like zoanthids and mushroom yeah, and kind of stuff. And things like that. But yeah. branching corals are, or even LPS corals like, uh, like hammers and uh, uh, torches and stuff. I mean, if I can go back here really quick to this tank, like these things uh, in a year, man, are all gonna start to grow all shadow. over each other. And if I didn't have a wide angle source of light, they would shadow each other and kill each other. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so yeah. even in a tank like this one, I think it's really important to think about how a branching coral is, coral is gonna grow out and shadow itself and mm -hmm. uh, its neighbors. All right, so, uh, all right. And so there you go, shadows, shadows. And uh, hard to tell which one's which. T five, tiny little bit sky. of shimmer. This is the area where, it, like, it really excels. This is also one of the things we really liked about the Philips light. Uh, yeah. You know why? Actually, the Philips light was the number, the very the first, first BRS TV investigates. Yeah, LED investigates that we ever did. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right, spectrum, quality of light. So this isn't just par, but are we hitting the pocket that we would like to? This is a lot of conversation about the spectrum on this one. This one we're going to hit a different like uh, angle on it and like kind of evolve our knowledge about the spectrum just a little bit. All right, so this is the ATI Blue Plus bulb. It's right? where we test all the spectrums against. I cannot tell you that this is the perfect spectrum, but I can tell you is everyone I talk to believes that this spectrum here is responsible for more healthy <laughs> corals than any other light source on the planet. So it works. It does right? work. Yes. Been proven. All right. So the sky here is a little narrower mm -hmm. and you can see it's impossible to miss, right? And we talk about the like, like width of uh, the yeah, blue. The widest blue band we can possibly try to get. 
And you know, you can see here we overlaid the, the two, and you can see there's some some missing here. Would look like anyway, right? And missing's the wrong word, though. Yeah, because it's actually here. It's just in different ratios. And the other piece of this is is it's we want to both measure it against a uh, historical standard, but we also have to you know measure it against the things that people are actually buying these days. Oh yeah, right? like there's very very few people buying new T5 fixtures. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that because we sell them and they just sit here and collect dust. <laughs> uh, so uh, in that spirit, uh, we wanted to share one thing here is so these are ratios. Right. So it's common thought that, OK, well, like, does this peak mean, does this blue 445 nanometer peak mean that that's all I have and these are just underrepresented? Uh, or not really there because there's a gap and that's, that's not necessarily true because it's a ratio. If it registers on the, the, spec, uh, the spectrum graph, then it is there in a ratio. The only thing is the 445 peak is higher ratio than the rest of them. So you see a big spike there because it's predominantly uh, that 445. And then yep. you think like, okay, well, can I adjust the light to widen it out even further? And so what I did, what we did was uh, I took the blue channel, the royal blue and blue channel, and I turned it down to about 50% or so, but left, the, left everything else the way it was. So whites on 100, um, violets and, and UVs on 100, and then that green was still at like 75. And you can see at the bottom here we did, it looks like it widened it out, and it looks like, oh, we gained UV. But actually we didn't gain anything just more of the ratio shifted towards the UV because we brought some of the blues down. That is the thing. This would look like, oh, okay, well, there's that much UV, kind of that matches up with uh, the, this guy. In this case, you're like, oh, wow, that's so much more. No, it's the exact same amount as it had over there. It's just because we brought this ratio down, all of a sudden, it's a bigger portion of the pie. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can see right here, just by adjusting the light, that all of this area fills in, right? So. This is one of the important parts as we're thinking about how we use these tools and we use them to measure. Some of this is like, this is the way that we set it up, but how you set it up will actually adjust this to, as well. Uh, but this is how they compare it against some of the other lights. Uh, these are all lights uh, in the same you know, price bracket yep. as this one. Uh, and you can see, you know what? It's missing the same kind of areas over here, uh, missing here and here. This one actually fills it up really, really well. Yeah. But one of the notables is it shifts that peak from you know 450 to all the way to like 460, yep. right? Yep. Uh, and this one all of a sudden has just a tremendous amount of UV right here. Uh, and so, you know, they're all different, but none of them are actually hitting it perfectly. Yeah. So. There's also a couple other pieces here, but I want to say, if I looked at this just as it is, I'd say, I guess it's somewhere in the middle of the pack or they're all kind of doing something a little bit different. But when you see the next couple pieces of Spectrum, I think you're going to say, you know what? It's actually performed better than the middle of the pack. Uh, come along for the ride. <laughs> uh, all right, so. I've seen these before. Yeah, this is the re part of the reason why. And you, if you saw that peak shift, from 450 to 460, 460. And you're like, oh, how could that possibly matter? You know, whatever. yeah. What's well, 10 nanometers? Well, well, these are the three things that really matter inside the coral. This is the things that are collecting the energy for the coral, and so the chlorophyll C2 here, you can see peaks right around that, like four, just under 445, 450. You know? Yeah. Okay. Now you might not think that matters, but look at 460. All of a sudden, the absorption of it actually meets way down here. It's that much less efficient at collecting energy just mm. 10 nanometers to the right. Like, so getting this right to begin with, actually there's 50% more energy there for the coral mm. uh, in this case. And you'll see that the carotenoids peak around the same place. Now, different corals from different depths and different colors will all behave differently. Right. But you can see why getting it uh, right actually matters. Mm. Okay, so the other portion of this we've talked a lot about is that blending piece. Like, this is a grid of LEDs. It's not a cohesive bulb. It's not yeah. a, uh, a halide or whatever. It's a whole bunch of other LEDs that we're just hoping are going to color mix into one cohesive spectrum. It's hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen so many lights that we've tested over the last few years that when you see 
LEDs spread across a board, uh, typically they haven't performed very well at spectrum blending and you almost have to mount the thing to get them to spread. You almost have to go up to like 14, 16 inches. Uh, but this is, you know, that diffuser piece and that acrylic plate inside the, uh, uh, underneath the diffuser where you actually get all of that, uh, all of those light spectrums blended in this much space before it comes out of the light into the tank. So, uh, well, the way we test this is we put the spectrometer underneath the cube with water. We throw a flow on it uh, so it starts to refract the, the light around and we take 10 shots. And uh, you know what? I'll show you how it goes. All right, so this is an example of what bad looks like from one of the lights that we've done before. Uh, and you will see it's Jump. just so wonky. Jump. I mean, it's just... Jump. All of it, and I'm telling you, you don't even need this meter to be able to see it. You can see it with the naked eye. Go up to your tank, see little bits of green and red and stuff shooting around. Mm. Well, uh, the human eye can see it, uh, we definitely measure it. And so in this case, what we're seeing is like, you know, just like mammoth amounts of UV, you know, hitting the coral. Like, imagine if that UV was hitting your skin. Well, you that's know? a, we brought near UV. I it. think we brought this up in a different live stream is, you know, how important that uh, spectrum blending is. Because what if I walked outside and uh, the sky, the, the diffuser of the sky, was not, uh, was not blending the spectrum rays. And all of a sudden, I get this extremely only red. Uh, spectrum range crossing my body a thousand times a day like this and then UV doing the same thing a thousand we'd probably die. Yeah, dude, these, these organisms have evolved around a very specific uh, yeah. spectrum range and I mean you could say I guess it's okay to have all kinds of crazy willy-nilly but if one of them blends them well and one of them doesn't and they were both the same cost which one would you want? Like so for instance would you want this one or uh, what the sky does. So in this case, this is the sky. It doesn't change at all. Can you see it? Um, I, I mean, I bet you can't even on that screen change it at all. Little it, just itty bitty bits uh, change. It has effectively taken all of those LEDs and blend them together. And I'm gonna actually go back to the opening slide here because we can see how it's done. So one of the questions is, is like, did Neptune just like, uh, you know, go have like, get some black box and have it remade? And the answer is obviously not. Yeah. You can see that they rebuilt this whole thing. It incorporates some of the technology that comes from the Philips light, does it with the color mixing uh, uh, sheet that goes on there that captures a lot of the rays that come out sideways. And isn't you have the diffuser of, sheet. Isn't this kind of Orphic too with the uh, acrylic plate? Or was that in the Philips also? You know, I don't know if that's what that one does in the Orphic light, because they have another set of lenses in it. Ah, sure. And it doesn't yeah. really end up blending at the well, same way. You saw way. these being fabricated and manufactured when you were down there the other week, weren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I'm doing all the, the QA. Uh, and so, yeah, in, in this case, this is why. You're seeing like the color mixing sheet on here. You're also seeing the diffuser. And that is why when we take all of those different colors of LED, uh, that you see in somewhere up here. Uh, when you see all those colors of LEDs and you see them, you know, all of these, and now they're mixed perfectly. So this is as good as it gets. Uh, I think we've won as, only one light has beat this, and that was the T5 itself, which do doesn't shift color at all. Yeah, so if you can use a co this only thing better this is one <laughs> single cohesive bulb, yeah. right? Uh, all right, and so in terms of uh, getting the spectrum set up, uh, there's a handful of options mm -hmm. uh, available to get it to you. They're not just going to leave you to yourself. This is the app. I haven't used it yet, so you can describe it. Yeah, the app's really, uh, really neat. I mean, Bluetooth set up as well as uh, like you have on the task, but I can also run that task on my phone or through the app. But uh, I like this one. Um, it, there's a Neptune recommendation one, which is pretty close to all channels 100%. I think they bring the whites and the greens down a little bit. The spectrum you're seeing here is what we chose for the BRS Custom. Like I said, all three channels 100% uh, and a little bit down on the green and ambers. Uh, but I can go in here, and I was messing around with it yesterday on, over the E170, and I can mess around with the different spectrums, play around, do what I want to. And I've act I actually walked away in the middle of playing around with this thing. Uh, and within like, I think like five, 10 minutes, it just reverted back and didn't, uh, I wasn't like messing with it permanently. Mm. 
Um, but then there's uh, all those other spectrum choices that you can choose from. I like the Neptune's recommendation one, and I like ours, personally. I, I did, I don't know if this is the recommended way, I use the task thing on my own tank, mm -hmm. and so just hit the task, it asks you five questions, and then it's done. It automatically groups all of the lights into one oh, for you, yeah. so when you make a, a change... Uh, it's that, been a challenge before with other... Uh, and then you get all the like Apex Ready stuff, so like when I flip the maintenance switch in the room, the lights turn off yep. during my water changes, I flip the switch and it turns off the pumps and the skimmers and yeah. everything all at once, and then I turn it back on. So. Uh, I, I don't know, I find it very easy to use during that. There also is the like super nerd way uh, where you can go <laughs> in and uh, uh, adjust them like kind of like... On uh, the back the, end, like an advanced feature type. They don't want us to show you, you that. You could go find each sky and then do the like little magic wand thing. <laughs> I don't think they want you to do it that way, but... This is way too easy. Yeah, these things are super duper easy. So it was, they had real su uh, suggested uh, uh, lights. There aren't so many sliders that... It's really hard to know what to do with all of them. Well, the good thing here too is that there's four sliders, and we just said that you can run this thing at 100%. All the ch all channels at 100%. It still looks good on the tank. You don't have to wear. It's almost like dummy proof when it comes to setting your spectrum. If you have no idea where you're going and you don't want to use one of the templates, set all the channels to 100%, and then adjust the overall inten the intensity slider, the brightness slider, uh, till it hits your par range. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. All right, so visual appeal. I mean, we bought this thing to make the tank look awesome, right? Does it? Uh, will the inside tank- Inside and out. Yeah, inside and outside. Like, I want this thing to look good in my home. I want it to look good in the coral because I appreciate a reef tank visually. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we have it. All right, so this is actually the tank uh, uh, that they went on originally. The 900. Uh, yeah, the 900. And right over here. There's three uh, of them on, uh, how long is the 900? Like seven feet? Just shy of, uh, I think it's like six and some change. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It looks really good. And uh, you can see... You know, a lot of the corals, man, really thriving in this environment. Barely a trickle of shimmer, and you can kind of catch it back in some of these corners. You can kind of catch it on the front of the sand bed, on that la on that full shot back before. But yeah. yeah, just if you're looking hard enough, you can see little shimmer lines here and there. Uh, which for me, I can see some shimmer lines up here on this leather and whatnot. But I really like that look. That's like, personally for me, I I enjoy that amount of shimmer. I don't know if I need much more. Yeah, I'm a, I, I like to add a little bit of shimmer. If it was up to me, I'd throw a couple, maybe the like like Kessel uh, 80s in there. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. that probably not do a real expensive. Yeah. Uh, all right. So it's also a clean look uh, on the tank. Uh, so you can actually get uh, like the mounts, like the Radeon mm -hmm. mounts. Uh, so by the way, ask questions because we'll answer them in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, we just hang it here, and it looks clean. There's only one cord. If you use the R, the Radeon arm, there actually There's be no cords. No cords. It'd hide it. Yeah. Uh, so it looks really slick on top of the tank. Well, bef the one before this was this tip. This tank usually has the uh, AT or the hybrid fixture, the Aquatic Life hybrid with a Kessel. Uh, it's like four to four to five cords coming out of that thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, nope, missed the water. Uh, all right. So accessories on this one. Uh, <laughs> You know, the last one we did had eight million accessories. Yeah. Uh, this one does not. Yeah, so it has <laughs> one Neptune accessory and a couple of adapters that are pieces that fit. If for some reason you just hate shimmer, <laughs> and they have like a couple of little ports on here that are uh, basically just clear uh, yeah. like plastic on them. You can put in diffusers if you just want to eliminate all shimmer uh, <laughs> entirely. Uh, they're like 15 bucks. I don't know why you would ever buy that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, somebody probably will. Uh, the funny part, I guess, is they have decided to take an approach of a, a universal mounting solution. <laughs> That's something that already exists. I mean, I'll open and honest, I don't really know whether or not it's a drive, drive towards that or let's just use the mounting options that already exist on the planet. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, because actually the Ecotech team has built really solid mounting options. Yeah. They have, you know, the arm that goes on the back, clamps on, super easy, runs the cords. Yeah. They also the have rails. these bars that you can either hang from the ceiling or you can put the little arms on it and it rests on top of the That's tank. That's really good. Uh, and this is a solution that we use for your tank. Just, yep, it is. Yep. I use these things. Uh, and it just happens to fit the same four bolts <laughs> in here. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, brilliant move. Or, uh, very interesting. I haven't seen anybody in this industry do that before. Uh, so, 
in that case, uh, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. I don't know. Uh, the whole thing is very new uh, with uh, the sister co company element. I don't know where they're at with getting new accessories and new mounting arms. What would you accessorize it with? I don't know. I, I have a hard time beating these these uh, uh, they work so options well. from Ecotex. I don't even know if it's worth the energy. Well, maybe a couple it. of pop-outs that you can get a little bit more shimmer. I mean, Ecotex probably happy they're selling so many more mounts. <laughs> 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 uh, all right. So. Uh, we'll answer questions just a second now. And so you guys can judge this for yourself. I'm really curious if you saw the same things we saw. Is this saw. what you saw from the beginning? It's T5-like uh, shadow performance, ideal for SPS or branching corals that shadows itself or neighbors. I think I saw that. It eliminates disco and overwhelming shimmer. We see it with a spectrometer. We see it with the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, a modular design that doesn't have two, 10 cords. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I had 8 million cords from all of the... Uh, Reef brights and the castle. Yeah, not just the the reef brights had a power cord; they also had a control cord as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so I had like eighty cords, man, and I got it all down to six, you know, uh, and just the two castles and the four of these. So modular line without all the cords, lower price point than half of the pack. So the price per par is half cheaper than half of the lights that we've tested. You know, a lot of people think of the Neptune stuff as like uh, it's going to be expensive. Uh, define expensive. It's uh, uh, cost versus performance, and it's right in the middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and when you add in the features and how it performs otherwise, it probably deserves that price. Uh, it can be used in a larger area than 24 inch, uh, square inch area. The fact that we turned it down to 70% to get the PAR numbers is evident of that. I use it in my own tank, covering about a 24 by 36 inch area. Nine inch probably mounting. 30, right? yeah. Probably 33 inches, really. Yeah. But uh, and it's Apex ready, it has all the little apps in there. Not only can you control it from your phone, uh, Bluetooth, you don't need an Apex to make it work. Uh, if you do have an Apex, you can run the task and run the app. Or uh, you also get all those cool things like, you know, I can use the switches and feed modes yep. to do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. I want to do a water change. I want to turn it on to, you know, show people for a minute, but I want it to turn it off in a minute, you know, hit the feed mode button. So it's all of those things, right? I think so. Yeah. All right, so I don't know. Uh, shoot a couple of questions here. There's a here. couple questions in here. Um, oh, first off, yes, I was given this today. I don't uh, know. Somebody surprised me and said, "Do you like this thing?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, I love it." So I don't know. Mug. I think I don't know when they said Black Friday, but I'm gonna try to like squeak it out of them earlier. It's like a nostalgia, <laughs> like retro reef chili coffee cup. I don't uh, know. Uh, they'll probably give it away free or something someday. All right, so probably one of the biggest ones. At, the ongoing conversation here is, uh, uh, you know, are we only talking about this light because Neptune's our sister company now? Now, we've done this in Vestigates before. We've done it hundreds of times on all kinds of lights. You're going to see another uh, more lights uh, coming up, too. Ryan and I are focusing specifically on Investigates uh, probably for the rest of the year and maybe longer. So you'll see this from us. So the real question is, wouldn't it be a gigantic mm. disservice if we didn't actually share the data on it? Not just for ourselves, but anybody yeah. anybody who's buying it. Yeah, if anybody's interested in this thing, isn't it a giant disservice? And so it's all in the data, and that's why we're like just sharing our findings from the test. And you can interpret it whatever way you mm -hmm. want. You can listen to our interpretation, or you can interpret it the way you want. You can decide, shadows just don't matter to me, and I, I'd rather have something different. Well, so be it. But now you're making an informed decision. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, you know, and then like, like the big question in all this, and I love the fact that people are challenging oh, us, yeah. uh, because like You're it gonna, just makes me want to try harder. Yeah, exactly. Like, so. I'll try to prove you wrong. All right. Next all right. One. Uh, I'll say, uh, Andrea Coral says hello from Italy. When will it be available in Europe? I don't really answer that question. Terrence probably knows the answer. I saw. Uh, if Terrence uh, in the crowd, all right. Well, Neptune's maybe you can say the crowd. <laughs> when it will be available in Europe. I don't know. And according to Neptune, they also have a uh, cord mounting kit or a black mount cord power supply or something mounting kit. It's in oh. there somewhere. Oh, all right. Um, Sky High Reef. Interesting. You guys don't shoot for 500 to 600 par like we've been told for years. Okay, so the the 200 to 350 par was came from a couple of different things. Yeah. It came from uh, shooting for uh, the same range as Worldwide was getting in both their all of their display tanks mm. as well as all of their grow out facilities. 
They've been doing this for a long time. They're doing Very it commercially where success is dollars yeah. uh, and failure is lack of dollars. Yeah. So that was a, a big touch point on it. Uh, we also went uh, to all the successful tanks around here and measured where they're at. Then we also went to uh, 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 Dana Riddle's uh, uh, data. Yeah. And he found, he went around like testing what corals thrive at different uh, PARs and different color matrices. And yeah. he was just recording them all these years. And he found like these little sweet spots, which was really close to the same 300, uh, 200 to 350 PAR range. Well, he found, he also found that, that that PAR range is in the morning and in the evening and the rest of the day, they're just protecting themselves from yeah, too much, too, high. too much PAR. So can they survive uh, higher? Yeah. Does that mean that it's uh, better? Not necessarily. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, we took and it this, from all the pros. And this is an average too. It's not like uh, everything needs to be 200 to 350 PAR. This is a total average of the tank and how many points in the tank are 200 to 350. Just like WWC, even here in our own, some of our own tanks, we have pockets of 500 where a, a coral is, or 400 where a coral is. There's pockets of 75 where some of the corals are. But on average, we're looking for 70% of the tank or more in that sweet spot. They don't always thrive in those areas. Though, yeah, exactly. Right? So it's super hot, it may actually grow slower. Yeah. And it definitely may not get as much color if it's really low. Yeah. So uh, there's different areas in it. and so. For me, it's look to my mentors, look to the success we've had ourselves, look to the people that uh, do this commercially, look to the people, the scientists of the world, and where all that data merges is where the most success will happen. Mm. Right? The other part of that 500 and 600 par piece that uh, you hear is, or I used to hear, you don't hear this very often anymore, is that where were they measuring? Yeah. You know, like 500 par, like, because uh, if I had 500 par at the bottom of the tank, uh, it's going to be 800 at the top. Oh, yeah. And so what I found is in a vast majority of cases where people were going out and trying to say they had 500 par, they were measuring the top of their aquascape and the corals at the very top. And mm -hmm. that is where the 500 came from. Yeah. Uh, not all the cases, but a vast majority of them, very few were looking anywhere else, so like right under the light. You know, mm. they're trying to like actually capture what the light's doing more so than the perfect place for the coral. Ah, uh, makes sense. So, I don't know, that's where that came from. Uh, Terrence does say that uh, outside of the USA in a couple months, and oh. a wire hanging kit so you can hang it. So, ah. a hanging mat, like you saw in the picture over the E170. Yeah. Uh, Rogue Aquariums sent five bucks, says keep up the good work, guys. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Sky High Reef again asks, what would you guys change about it? What would I change about it? You know, I think some people, some, somebody might make an argument for adding a few more of these little pop-outs to maybe get a little more shimmer out of it. Uh, a couple more. I don't know how drastically that would change the shimmer. Um, you know, maybe you could find like those little quad LEDs or something that they make that are a little brighter and put them in there. Uh, you could also, you know, convince Kessel to give you a little, a little 80 for the middle. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's for the shimmer aspect for me. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I obviously time will tell when we use it. You know, the piece that we talked about with the the spectrum. If I could, I guess I'd make it a little wider, but it's hitting the right peak at the right, mm -hmm. and it's wide at the base. Uh, and it's blending it all like really, really well. Really the, well. the best we've seen other than a T5 bulb. So uh, I think there's a little area there, man. Uh, but as you saw, almost all of the LEDs in the same price range uh, could use some help use from some that. Help. And the ones below this price range absolutely could use some help. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. You know, I think those are a couple of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah about it. Uh, I can still use my Ecotech rail, which is the only way I can hang my lights. That's true. Yeah, so you can use all, all the Ecotech uh, rails uh, uh, and little brackets that screws right into it. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's what we got. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. I'll be really curious to see if you guys like this live format. I, one of the reasons we did it live today this way is because I just wanted to keep it a little more real. <laughs> you know, when you shoot it and you like, edit it and polish it and whatever. Yeah. This yeah. one was really important that you hear it like straight from the mouth. Straight from the mouth, off the cuff. Uh, I can say something and oops, but no. <laughs> hey, well, I think that if we have if we had it if we had it edited, the, the thought of oh you guys uh, you know made your uh, made your own way around this thing. Uh, okay, there's so often there's not more authenticity by pitching it to you guys. Here, here's the big deal, dude. Thumbs up if you feel like we 
share the data accurately in a way that's helpful and you'd like to see more of. Uh, thumbs down if you're like, uh, this is a couple <laughs> of shills just trying to sell a light. <laughs> no. uh, I, I really want to hear. I want to hear the free feedback, man. Uh, it helps us uh, steel sharpen the steel. Yeah. All right. More, well, light, more lights and investigates on the way. Uh, Randy's out of town next week, so I don't know. Maybe it'll just be me. Maybe yeah. I'll uh, have somebody join us. I don't know. I'll be in Alaska fishing. All right, man. Have a good time. <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. See you guys.